Hey guys, what's up? In the last couple days, I've gotten some emails on passive speaker systems. Questions, inquiries. One guy was at a summer camp and they had a DJ there and the speaker system sounded terrible. He suspected the DJ was overpowering the system. I suspect the DJ was underpowering the system and I'll get into that in a minute. Another email I got was from someone asking, where to set the gains on your amp? Good questions. And I've got this information scattered throughout my channel on different videos, but I thought I'd do one video or keep it simple, maybe, try to. It's hard for me to keep it simple sometimes, but I'm going to give it a shot. Let's talk about the summer camp guy. DJ is there, playing the music, sounds great, all of a sudden things start sounding bad, speakers start distorting, and it starts getting quiet. No matter how loud the DJ turns it up, you just can hardly hear it. Is the DJ overpowering their speakers? I suspect not. I think the DJ was underpowering their speakers. And that might sound weird to you, but it's worse to underpower than it is to overpower. I overpower most of my passive speakers. Of course, I don't use passive anymore. I use active. But I always try to overpower by 50 to 100%. Get into that in a minute. Okay, so if you have a speaker that's 250 watts program at 8 ohms, and you have an amplifier that's 175 watts at 8 ohms per side we don't have a good match here what happens is the speaker tries to pull more power from the amp and the amp tries to give the speaker more power because it's asking for it well the amp's going to get hot and it's doing something that it's not made to do it's going to overheat and that's where you get your distortion and you do this enough you're going to ruin your amp in fact you could ruin it on one gig just Electronics do not do well when they get hot. They have strokes, kind of like I had. And they're never the same again. You've kind of fried them out. So it's better to overpower your speakers, I would say, by 50 to 100%. Why? Well, we know that when the amp doesn't have enough power for the speaker, it strokes out. So if you had a lot of extra power, the amp would never get hot, and you would get a clean signal all night. So the more power you give a speaker over and beyond what it asks for a program, the better the amp's going to perform. So I like to go, I don't know, if I have a 250 watt speaker at 8 ohms, I like to run an amplifier that's stable at 8 ohms and it'll give you, oh let's say, 360 to 380 watts to 500 watts per side. And then the question is where to set that volume? Well, a lot of factors on this, depends. But I would say, go ahead and crank it all the way up at first and listen to your system. If it sounds like your speakers are being overpowered, which will maybe give you a little bit of distortion, bring them down. Just kind of feel it out. Sometimes speakers can handle more than they say they can. And sometimes amps don't deliver quite what they say they deliver. So some of that's trial and error. But I would go ahead and start cranking it up all the way. Use that zero dB rule that I've shown you guys where everything's at zero, the main, and the line channel and adjust things from there and go with it. Now if you're running a system with a sub then what you're gonna wanna do is have some kind of crossover. A lot of times if you get like a Crown XTI amplifier the crossovers are built into the amp. You plug it into your laptop, get into a program like System Architect and adjust things to where they should be. It's a little complicated, but it's actually very cool and a lot of stuff that you don't have to carry around or worry about. For subs, most of the time, most of the subs that we're using, like, I don't know, 18-inch subs, 40 hertz is kind of where they start performing, and they go all the way up to sometimes 250, which is ridiculous. You'd never want to run that through a sub. That would be a lot of vocals and things coming through them. So I recommend that you run your subs. If you run your crossover, your high-pass filter, I would put it at about 45 and then your low pass, I would put at 90. So basically, all the stuff that you're getting from your music from 40 to 90 is going to come through the sub. And that's going to be all your sub bass, your boom, 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 boom. That's what you want. You don't want to run it lower because the speaker really can't handle it. I don't care if they put it in hip-hop music. I don't care. They're not sounds that anything can hear but a dog. Don't run anything... I would say under 45 on the high pass. And then 90 on the low pass, why? So your top cabs can pick everything up from 90 all the way up 
on those. You're going to get all your mid base, which is the punchy stuff you hear in house, and your crisp highs and mids. Something else worth mentioning if you run your crossovers properly, your speakers are not only going to sound great, but they're going to run a lot more efficient because they don't have to worry about frequencies that they're not really designed for. Like if you have a set of top cabs, only top cabs and no subwoofer and no crossover points anywhere, they have to worry about the entire frequency range, even the sub bass. They're not really designed for sub bass, they're designed for mid bass. Now sometimes you can get a passive crossover in there that weeds a lot of that out, but still it bleeds through. So the less the speaker has to do, the better it's going to sound. If it only has to worry about a certain frequency range, it's going to be very happy. The sub, if it doesn't have to worry about high and mid because you cross it over at 90, it's only going to take care of the boom, boom, boom. It's going to sound awesome. If it doesn't have to worry about the stuff below 45 that you can't hear anyway, it's going to sound awesome. Some of this stuff might sound pretty complicated to you. And to be 100% frank with you, it would sound really complicated to me probably 10 years ago, too, before I learned about it. A lot of people will say, oh, well, I can afford this amp and the speaker, and they buy it. Things don't work, and they sound like crap. It's happened to me. I've blown stuff up. I've had to have stuff in the shop all the time. Couldn't figure out why. I didn't have things matched up right. But today we have really cool alternatives where you don't have to worry about any of that stuff. That's active speakers. If you don't quite know what's going on with the passive, and you don't want to mess with you know, messing with the amplifier, trying to figure out where the crossover point should be. If that's just science fiction to you, or too brainy for you, which it was for me for a while, get an active speaker system. There are lots of great active speaker systems out there from lots of different manufacturers. Everybody knows that I like RCF because I think it sounds awesome. Some people like QSC. American Audio's got some nice systems out there. Marathon's got some nice systems out there. JBL has some great systems. There's tons of choices out there for you. And the stuff's pretty much done for you. If you get a pair of top cabs, active top cabs, and you get a subwoofer, the crossover points are right there for you. You get a couple little adjustments that you can make, and you're done. And everything's matched up already. Your amp and your speaker's matched up. Now, the better quality you go with your active speaker system, the better everything's going to sound. Some people go for the no-name bargain stuff online. And sometimes this stuff sounds really nice, but then the problem is things aren't matched up right. You feel that amplifier after about 20 minutes, you can fry an egg on it. And you don't want that. You want tried, true, tested, quality components that don't distort and don't get hot on you. So do some research. Ask around. Ask me if you'd like to. I'd be happy to give you my opinion on stuff. There are some speaker systems I like, and some I don't, and I got reasons for it. And then there are some manufacturers that make some great systems and some not so great systems. So do your homework. Typically, really, the more money you spend, the better off you are. But that's not always the case. So do some homework, shop around, listen to some stuff at the store if you can. If not, talk to somebody you trust and make that purchase. It makes life a lot easier. That's it for this video. We'll see you next time. Practice and enjoy.